Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel guys. So what I have for you guys today obviously I am now back from my holiday and in the week I was away a lot of stuff went down in the championship which we are of course going to be discussing in today's video guys. So we're going to be discussing all the recently completed transfers which did go through in the last week or so. I'll give you guys my judgement on what I think of them and then of course we will go ahead and discuss some of the latest transfer rumours which are going around the championship. And let me just say we got some big ones going around. Before we actually do get into any of the transfer rumours. I must say apologies for my voice. It is very dodgy at the moment as I have just come back from holiday and everything like that. But even so, we'll try and soldier on through this video and uh, like I said, we've got some big transfers to talk about. So with the championship season only one month away now, make sure you do leave a like on the video guys if you are excited for championship football to be returning very soon. And let me know down below what you make of all the recent speculation and what you make of your club's transfer business so far. So we'll start out the video by talking over some of the recently completed to deals which have gone through. Obviously, as I was away for a week, we've got quite a bit to round up. So we'll start with Middlesbrough. They've been fairly busy in the transfer market lately. They, of course, completed the signing of both Paddy McNair and Aidan Flint as well, of course. Aidan Flint moving from Bristol City for a fee in around about £7 million. And uh, really, it is a typical Tony Pulis signing this. You know, he's a six foot six centre back, and boy, does he have a goal presence. Last season in the Championship, he scored nine goals. And the season that Bristol City were promoted from League One, he scored 16 goals as a centre back. You can only imagine the damage that someone like Aidan Flynn and Daniel Leala are going to do from set pieces next year for Middlesbrough. The spine of that team is looking very strong now, especially with the addition of Paddy McNair. Bristol City then, of course, looked to replace Aidan Flynn and they went ahead and brought in Adam Webster from Ipswich Town. I'd suggest that that's actually quite a good deal for them, of course. One towering centre back replacing another, really. Over the last few years, you know, Adam Webster's got pretty unlucky with injuries, but if he can stay fit at Bristol City, I think he'll do very well there. You know, Ipswich which fans held him in very high regard while he was at the club. I think he'll do quite well for Bristol City. Bolton Wanderers complete the signing of Clayton Donaldson. I think that he's a decent option for them. You know, they were in need of that sort of player after, of course, Aaron Wilbraham was released. I think that, obviously, he is quite an old player, but if he can stay fit, I think he'll be a decent option for Bolton. Cardiff City have really been poaching some championship talent in this transfer window as well. We've recently seen Alex Smithies from QPR, the goalkeeper, and Bobby Reid both leave for the Premier League to go to Cardiff. And I'd be interested to hear from some QPR fans and some Bristol City fans especially as to what do you make of these departures you know Alex Smithy is probably one of the most underrated goalkeepers in the championship from his time at QPR I thought he was an excellent keeper Bobby Reid as well what a season he had last year and Bristol City fans I'd be interested to hear what your mindset is so far about this transfer window of course you've lost some very big players in both Bobby Reid and Aidan Flint but the incomings have been quite promising as well Nottingham Forest the team who has just been ridiculously busy in this transfer window went ahead and completed the signing of the striker Hill Lil Sudani. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know all too much about him, but when you look at his scoring record, especially for his previous club, Dynamo Zagreb, he went ahead and scored 69 goals in 132 games for them, which is an astonishing goal return. So if he can produce anything like that in the championship, there's reason for optimism at Forest, definitely. Of course, they also completed the signing of Jack Robinson, of course, last season playing for QPR. That's a pretty solid addition at left back. Birmingham completed the signing of Christian Pedersen, quite a physical left back coming into the squad. Norwich are another team who's been very busy lately in the transfer window. Though they completed the signing of Ben Marshall. I think that's an excellent addition, really. Last season from his time at Millwall, I think he showed what he's all about. And I think that he'll do well to fit into that Daniel Farker system. You know, he can either play as a wing back or further forward as a winger. They also completed the signing of Leitner. And as well as that, they got Felix Passlack on loan from Borussia Dortmund for this season. So I'm excited to see how this Norwich side is going to function going into this season. Leeds are in need of some central midfielders. And they bolstered their option with the loan signing of Lewis Baker coming in from Chelsea. Of course, last season on loan at Middlesbrough. I think that if used in the right way, Marcelo Bielsa could have a really good player there. Bournemouth also followed through and completed the signing of David Brooks arriving from Sheffield United, of course. I was a bit disappointed when this one went through, really, because I was really looking forward to seeing another season of David Brooks in the Championship, but fair play to him. He's got a massive opportunity now to go ahead and impress in the Premier League, you know. From what I saw of him last season, he's an exceptional talent, you know. That game he had in the Steel City derby, he was absolutely phenomenal. We also saw Bristol City sign Vyman from Derby County, of course. We were expecting Derby to have a few outgoings in this transfer window, you know, where they probably do need to sell before they buy. But Vyman, coming into Bristol City, one that I'm quite looking forward to. Bristol City have been fairly busy in this transfer market so far. They've already signed a couple of wingers and a couple of other positions, but Vyman's a player who does excite me whenever I watch him. He's a versatile forward, can either play as a 10 or a winger. And I think he'll fit into Lee Johnson's system quite well at Bristol City. Then we had some goalkeepers who were on the move in this transfer window. We saw Forrest complete the signing of Costel Pantillamon, of course. 
last season. He was on loan there at the second half of that season. And uh, a very good option once again for Nottingham Forest too. I'd be interested to know from you guys, the general championship fan, where do you see Nottingham Forest finishing this season? Let me know down below. We also saw Stoke complete the signing of Adam Federici. Of course, that was coincided with Lee Grant leaving for Manchester United. That one certainly caught me off guard. But Federici, an interesting one. In years gone by, he was, of course, a very capable keeper. But over the last four seasons or so, he's only played a handful of games. So whether he's still got it or not, it's yet to be seen. But the big goalkeeper on the move this season was, of course, Sam Johnson, who completed his move to West Brom for a fee of $6.5 million. And uh, I've got to say, the relegated clubs coming back down to the championship, they are looking quite strong at the moment. You know, West Brom have got a fantastic keeper in Sam Johnson. Last season in the championship, he conceded the third fewest amount of goals, only conceding 42 goals last season, and arguably was one of the best goalkeepers in the championship next season. And to get him for a fee of 6.5 million, West Brom are in a good position going forward. So guys, there were some of the recently completed deals which have gone through in the last week or so. I'm sure I have missed some as we didn't have time to include all of them, but make sure you do leave a comment in the comments down below as to what you have made of your club's recent deals. So uh, without further ado guys, let's go ahead and hop into some transfer rumours. So we'll start out the transfer rumours with one that looks to be pretty much all but over the line when I am recording this video. That is of course Jack Hunt who looks to be on his way to Bristol City from Sheffield Wednesday for a fee of around about £1.6 million. Now I believe he is into his last year of his contract at Sheffield Wednesday and for only £1.6 million, I think Bristol City are getting a very good deal there. He's an attacking fullback who loves to make overlapping runs and I think he'll do well to fit into that Bristol City system you know they're quite reliant on their fullbacks providing width for them. Sheffield Wednesday though it's a bit of a funny situation that they're left in you know of course with them playing with wing backs this is a position that they need to look to reinvest some of this money into. You know I think they're only going to be left with Liam Palmer now after Hunt does leave you know. Defensively I thought that Hunt could be caught out sometimes but going forward I think he's a very good option for Bristol City. Perhaps one player who Sheffield Wednesday are looking to replace him with would be Sam Byron coming in from West Ham United. Now reportedly he is available on a loan deal and the two clubs from the championship who are said to be interested are both Sheffield Wednesday and Nottingham Forest and with Forest at the moment you can't put anything past them but I think that Sam Byron taking a step back to the championship would be a very good deal for both clubs. Another defender being linked around the championship at the moment is that of Kyle Bartley. He's been linked with a move for quite a few championship clubs at the moment being linked to West Brom, Birmingham and Leeds United of course. With Birmingham he'll have that link with Gary Monk and of course previously playing for Leeds but West Brom are said to be the new club who are interested in the centre back and if they can pull this one off I mean they've got a very good squad going into this year. But without doubt the biggest transfer rumour going around the championship at this point in time is that of Matt Ritchie who is currently being linked with the move to Stoke City. Now reportedly when I am recording this video Stoke have had a bid of 15 million rejected from Newcastle United for Matt Ritchie and if they do go back in for him which I expect them to do he could be a phenomenal player in the championship you know he was a pivotal cog in Newcastle getting promoted back to the Premier League at the first time of asking in that season he went ahead and scored 12 goals and 7 assists and his quality coming cutting in from that right hand side just goes unparalleled in the championship I get the feeling that if Newcastle are going to sell Ritchie they'll be looking to get his replacement in before they actually go ahead and sell so this is the sort of transfer room which could rumble on for the remainder of the transfer window but if they do pull it off Stoke are seriously showing ambition to get straight back up. Another player Stoke would be linked to perhaps they were going for Sergi Canos if the Matt Rich deal doesn't go ahead and come off. I think that towards the tail end of last season Sergi Canos at Brentford was really showcasing what he's capable of doing. You know Brentford have got some fantastic young attacking players and Sergi Canos is certainly one of the better players they have at the club at the moment. Then one transfer rumour which really did caught my eye that was Jordan Hugel who is currently being linked with the move to QPR on loan from West Ham now of course since his arrival to West Ham from Preston in January, things haven't really worked out for Jordan Hugel. I think he's only played about half an hour of football since he has arrived there. And West Ham have said that he is available to go out on loan this season. And QPR are currently the front runners for his services. Of course, they are in need of a striker. In my opinion, he would be an excellent acquisition for a side like QPR. If you look at his goal scoring record, he's not he's not the greatest in the championship, but Jordan Hugel just gives you something extra that you can't really explain. His physicality holds up play and power just goes absolutely unrivaled in the championship you know he is that player who is capable of playing up front on his own and when he has players playing in behind him like say Luke Freeman at QPR he could really do some damage for them next season I think that he'd fit 
into a Steve McLaren side and overall I think that will be a very good deal for QPR you know I'd certainly take him back at Preston. Last week we were seeing the transfer rumour that Jack Rodwell was being linked with the move for Bolton Wanderers of course recently being released from Sunderland I mean his time at Sunderland was just an absolute disaster but he's a footballer who is in need of getting his career back on track you know he's going to have to take a massive pay cut wherever he does end up you know I'd probably argue that he's probably going to end up somewhere abroad but if he was to go back into the championship and move to Bolton may not be bad for him there is still a talented player in there he just needs to get his mindset and attitude correct and we're also seeing Bolton being linked with a move for Ipswich Town striker Joe Garner reportedly they are willing to pay half a million pounds for his services Ipswich fans let me know down below would you be willing to let Joe Garner go of course he picked up an injury towards the latter end of last season where his form did slowly start to tail off a little bit in my opinion I think that Joe Garner is an excellent target man for the championship one stat that I loved about Joe Garner I think it was back in the 14 slash 15 season for Preston in the championship that year he was the most foul player however he also also committed the most fouls so as a striker he's certainly someone who's going to get in defenders faces try to put them off and that sort of thing in the championship he's not the most prolific of goal scorers but as a hold-up player I think he is excellent and would suit the way that Bolton play and for 500k I think that would be a very good deal for them my team pressing off then are still in the hunt for a target man to go ahead and replace Jordan Hugel who we of course lost in the January transfer window one of the names currently being talked about is Charlie White I've pre we've pretty much been linked to this guy for the last like five transfer windows we always seem to pop up with this rumour. However, there are a number of other Lancashire clubs who are interested in the Bradford man, with Bolton and Wigan Athletic both also interested. The fee will probably be around about £1 million. Last season in League One, he went ahead and scored 13 goals. Preston fans, do you think he'd be our best option to go for? Another transfer rumour with Preston, which just won't seem to go away at the moment, is that of Kiefer Moore. Now, reportedly, Barnsley are asking for £2 million for for the target man and in my opinion I can't see Preston paying that really I think the most we pay for a target man like Keith or more will probably be that 1 million going up to 1.5 I can't see us spending I can't see us breaking the bank or breaking our transfer record for this sort of player of course last season in the championship I think he had one of the best aerial duels one percentage rates however his goal scoring rate in the championship wouldn't really warrant that price tag in my opinion another player being linked around the championship at the moment is that of David McGoldrick of course recently being released from Ipswich Town. Currently the clubs said to be interested are Aston Villa, West Brom and Bristol City of course. These last few years he struggled with injuries really and not really been able to be a consistent performer in that Ipswich Town starting 11. You could argue he's been a bit lazy at times as well but I think that his technical ability speaks for itself really and if you can get the right system around a player like David McGoldrick he can be very effective. You know he's quite a diverse forward, can play as a number 9 and number 10 or even out wide if he's needed to and for a club like Aston Villa who are trying to bring someone in on a fairly cheap budget you know after losing someone like Lewis Graben on loan last season, this move would make sense. And speaking of Lewis Graben, currently there are two clubs who have both had bids accepted reportedly, and they are both Nottingham Forest and Birmingham. So let me know down below where you guys think that Lewis Graben will end up at the end of this transfer window, of course. A prolific goal scorer in the Championship, there's no doubt about that. Whenever I do watch him, I do find him a very frustrating player to watch. You know, he's certainly not someone who is going to put 100% into every game. You know, he sort of reminds me of that Dimitar Berbatov sort of play you know he's a poacher in and around the box but doesn't really add too much else but you can't argue with his goal scoring record last season in the championship he went ahead and scored 20 goals and uh, with both sides in need of a striker and with him valued at around about five million pounds with one year left on his contract he'd be a very good addition for either side then we of course have Mate Vidra this transfer rumor just seems to be rumbling on and rumbling on but Leeds United still heavily linked with him and to be honest I would be quite surprised if this deal didn't come off to be honest I do think that at the end of this transfer window Vidra will be a Leeds United player of course in my opinion they're probably still gonna need another striker to come in you know Vidra I see him playing as more of a 10 for Leeds next season but even so last season in the championship managing to score 21 goals and if using the right system under Marcelo Bielsa Leeds are doing bits this season of course Leeds are also in the market for a goalkeeper currently the two they're being linked with are both David Stockdale and Jamal Blackman of course currently playing for Chelsea Blackman last season he was loaned out to Sheffield United where he went ahead and had a pretty solid season so a position that Leeds do need to look into Blackman would be a decent option for them reportedly Derby County had a bid rejected from Brentford for Josephine of 1.5 million and uh, since then Leeds United have also entered the race to go ahead and sign him last season he was a player from Brentford who highly impressed me really went ahead and scored seven goals and picked up seven assists as well of course with Derby County looking to bolster their wide options after losing Vyman to Bristol City then speaking of Bristol City they're of course still in need of a goalkeeper 
but currently they are being linked to a couple around the championship. The first of which being David Button, of course, playing for Fulham last season. He sort of rotated with Bettinelli. He'd be a decent option for them to come in. Bristol City are also being linked with a move for Wes Fodringham, of course, currently playing for Rangers. Reportedly, he has been told that he can now leave after, of course, Rangers did sign Alan McGregor in this transfer window. Reportedly as well, Birmingham are also interested in the shot stopper. Millwall have been linked with a move for Tom Bradshaw of Barnsley, of course. Last season in the championship, he went ahead and scored 12 goals. Reportedly, they have had a bid rejected of 800k. And in my opinion, I can't see Millwall breaking the bank for a player like Tom Bradshaw. However, he is the sort of player that they are in need of. You know, last season, it was Morrison and Gregory who led the line for Millwall, and they formed a fantastic partnership. But going forward, you feel like they need a different type of player, someone who can stretch the back line and make runs in behind. Tom Bradshaw is that sort of player. So he does fit the bill with what Millwall are in need of, but I can't see them paying much more than 800k really. One transfer rumour which did surprise me really and I can't see coming off was Tammy Abraham being linked with the move for Derby County of course. With Derby's new manager being Frank Lampard, you know, these links between Chelsea and Derby were to be expected. However, I do think that this one is a little bit too far-fetched really of course. Tammy Abraham last season, he last time he was in the championship with Bristol City, he went ahead and scored 26 goals. Uh, just had an unbelievable return for them of course. Since then, he's went on to play in the Premier League with Swansea, and I think that is his level, really. I think he's too good for the Championship, and I would be very surprised if Tammy Abraham was to drop back down to the Championship. I think he is going to have some offers from the Premier League. Perhaps a more realistic target for Derby County is going to be Jack Marriott, currently playing for Peterborough United. Last season in all competitions, he went ahead and scored 33 goals, and I think that whoever ends up with Jack Marriott is going to have a star next season, of course. This is probably going to depend on what does happen with Matej Vidra, you know, they'll look to reinvest that cash back into the squad. He's going to cost around about 6.5 million, so for a League One striker, it's pretty pricey, but from what he showed last season, you know, the attributes that he's got to bring to a side like Derby, he's, he's going to light it up next year, in my opinion. The other side said to be interested are Bristol City and Nottingham Forest and Birmingham, and uh, it's no surprise to see a lot of clubs being linked to him. Another player being linked around the championship at the moment is that of Jordan Rhodes. Now, currently, Sheffield Wednesday are reportedly wanting £3 million pounds for a loan fee for the season for Jordan Rhodes. So just three million to get him on loan for the entirety of the season. And when you look at his goal return from the last couple of seasons, he doesn't really warrant that, you know. You still get the impression that Jordan Rhodes can still be a top championship striker, but his confidence over the last few years has just been absolutely shot, and reportedly Norwich were said to be a little bit interested in him, but with that sort of money, I can't see him being on the move anywhere, really. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday are really going to have to lower their valuation of Rhodes if he is going to leave this summer. However, one player who could be in very high demand this summer is that of Martin Waghorn, of course, currently playing for Ipswich Town. Now, Ipswich last season probably got the bargain of the century, picking up Martin Waghorn for only about 250k. The price tag on his head now will be upwards of 8 million. I'd expect, you know, from the season he had last year, managing to get into double figures for both goals and assists. Currently, the side said to be interested are both Nottingham Forest and Middlesbrough, and he'd be a fantastic acquisition wherever he does end up. But in my opinion, this season, Ipswich are going to have a rebuilding job on their hands, and Waghorn is that key player who they need to keep hold of, in my opinion, if they are going to have a successful transition. And then we will end the video on quite an interesting rumour currently going around the Championship. Reportedly, British Sombolonga and manager Tony Pulis have had a bit of a falling out in pre-season, which could suggest a Sombolonga could be on the move in this transfer window. And with Nottingham Forest in need of a striker, Forest fans, let me know down below, would you like to see British Sombolonga come back to the city ground if this deal was to happen? Let me know down below if you'd like to see it. Of course, in the Championship, when he is fit, he can be a prolific goal scorer. Last season, he went ahead and scored 15 goals, and it is without doubt you know, when he gets a full season under his belt, he's, he can be banging in more than 20 goals. The only thing that would probably put Forest fans off from a Sombolonga would be the bitter taste he left in their mouths when he did leave, you know, after signing that new contract. So, Forest fans, let me know down below, would you like to see a Sombolonga back at the club? And Middlesbrough fans, what do you think the situation is currently going on between him and the manager? So guys, there you have it. There are all the latest transfer rumours which are currently going around the championship. So, if you guys have seen any that we didn't mention in today's video, make sure you do leave them in the comments down below so we can have a bit of a discussion about them all. But apart from that guys, that will now wrap it up for this video. So if you have enjoyed, make sure you leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. Let me know down below if you are excited for Championship Football to be returning very soon indeed. But like I said guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, make sure you do subscribe for some regular Championship content. And I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>